The birth control pill was introduced to American society 50 years ago this year, and it's been at the center of controversy and debate ever since. One side says it's given women freedom over their bodies, their sexual practices, and a role in deciding how many children, if any, to have. But the other side says it's put women's health at risk. It may have led to sexual promiscuity, and it could actually demean women. What do you say? Well, it's your call this hour on the birth control pill, 50 years later, and our debate starts right now. was considered beyond revolutionary when it was introduced back in 1960. A pill taken daily was said to keep a woman from getting pregnant. Now for the first time there was a contraceptive available with a 99% success rate. This put women in the driver's seat when it came to sexual decisions. Single but sexually active? Hey, the pill was the answer. Married but not ready for children? Again, the pill was said to be the answer. Interested in a career but wanted children too? Well, the pill could let women decide when and how many children it was, but it was immediately criticized for the side effects and the health risk it could present. There was a concern about sexual promiscuity and loose sexual morals, and some just believe it's wrong to interfere with good old mother nature. Where do you stand? Well, we're going to find out as we debate the pros and cons of the birth control pill. Hi there, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle, and I have to tell you, I'm of the generation where the pill has all always been available to us. I came of age in the late 60s and 70s and it was just part of our societal landscape. But my question to you is, was that such a good thing or did it give us an out for our behavior? If you want to be part of our discussion, you can email me right now with your thoughts and questions at lynn at lynndoyle.net. Let me know that you are watching on this network. In the meantime though, our guests are ready to tell us what they think and it's a great panel. Supporting the pill is radio personality Kendra G, who as you know is the host of Live with Kendra G on 100.3 The Beat. She believes it's important for women and young girls to have the option of deciding when they'd like to be a mother since, hey, it's their life. Also supporting it is Dana DeBeck Milstein. She's the director of leadership programs at the Alice Paul Institute, which as you know was named for Alice Paul. And she says that women also should have the right to choose. On the other side of this issue, an old friend of our show, Dr. Janice Hollis, who is the CEO of Hollis Professional Group. She's the founder of TYMS. That means training young minds to soar. It's a mentoring network that also teaches abstinence educations. And rounding out the panel is Edel Finnegan, who is the executive director of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Pro-Life Union. She is the author of The Dialogue, a presidential prayer book, Harsh Realities of Collective Responsibilities. That's a title that's sure to get your attention. Ladies, great to have you with us Thank for you. what I know is going to be a fantastic discussion. <laughs> yes. I want to turn right to Kendra because she is never shy in expressing her <laughs> opinion. And you say, hey, Hey, it's a girl's life, a teen's life, or a woman's life. It should be her decision whether she has children or not. Oh, most definitely. You know, I even have an organization called Abstinence is Cool where I preach abstinence to teen girls, but I'm also a realist. And I know that everybody has to make their own decision in life. And who am I to tell you that you should be a mother if you know you don't want to be a mother? I mean, it does sound right, but the reality is people need to have their own individual choices. Now, you and Dr. Hollis are on the same side because you both preach abstinence right. and yet you say that the pill is not necessarily a good thing for young women. Well, I was, I'm going to address it from this platform when it comes to African American teens because we get the stats from the health clinics and looking at the rate of STDs as a result of young girls being involved in sexual activities and most of them have already had three or four partners not understanding that those antigenes are being passed on from relationship to relationship is very harmful and most of them are not psychologically and emotionally act yeah, to, to even embrace those types of relationships. So in that regard, I'm totally against it. All right, I know that a lot of people are concerned about the health risk. Adele, is that your biggest um, opposition to the birth control pill, the risk that it provides it's to women? It's one of my oppositions. I think one thing that's interesting is the effect that the birth control pill is having on our environment, how the synthetic estrogens are affecting our environment, seeping into our rivers and streams. So that's one aspect of the health risks, but also just how a young girl might not even realize 
what the pill could possibly do, especially if she starts taking at a young age. And I just believe that women are capable of making a decision to choose chastity. Could you young back girls. up for a second and explain how taking the pill could be an environmental risk? Because the synthetic estrogens of the artificial birth control pill or any hormonal contraceptive, they're seeping into our rivers and our streams, and that's affecting the fish and our water supply and so many different other aspects of it and there's recent studies that have come out about that. How are they getting into the waters and streams? It's because of the way it's going through they're um, going through our, our sewage system. It's kind of hard to explain but it is clear. I mean it is true and it is happening and I have some studies about it recently. Okay that just is a fascinating aspect to this because I'd never heard about that before so that's something for it's you all to consider. A yeah. lot of people do need to think about that because it is affecting our waters and our streams and if it's doing that to our fish if it's feminizing fish like you've read stu studies about that if it's feminizing our fish and affecting them how is that going to affect young women who are taking the pill and maybe not realizing the damage it does. Hmm. So the pill taking the pill is messing with the environment Yes, okay. it is. Okay, that's a new one, but, <laughs> but, but hey, one. we're here to learn. What about having you're a baby you're... that you don't want to have? Well, here's the thing. Does that <laughs> if, the you're, if you're in a marriage, mm -hmm. it's actually both parents that's responsible for the well-being of a baby. Right. Now, the positive aspect I believe the pill offers to a married couple is they give them the option to choose when to begin mm -hmm. a family. Gotcha. However, uh, the other fallout from so many women, especially teens, I'm going to just concentrate on teens, right. from so many teens being involved in sexual activities, activity, and when they become pregnant, most of them don't return to school to attain a form of education. So what are we setting up here? We're setting up a subculture with an ideology that's going to lead straight to welfare, they're going to be unproductive citizens, and that's just not well, cool. Well, first of all, can I just say that I agree with you on all the things, like I said, I have an organization called Absence is Cool, which I preach Absence to Teen Girls, but the reality reality is they have to make their own decision. Where you are right now, have you always been this way? You probably have involved to become this woman. We have to accept that reality. Like right now, personally, I have chose chastity. I'm not having sex right now. I believe everything that you're saying, but not everybody is like me. But and that's the reality we have to But here's the other reality. Here's the other reality. Mm -hmm. And you know this more than any other person sitting here, also being a woman of color. Right. The infrastructure in the home is so poor when it comes to I young agree. girls having a strong support system to help them uh, stay away from some of the social ills or just that are just waiting for them and really devouring them. So I believe as a leader, not just as a black woman, but as a community leader, a leader to leaders, I have a greater responsibility to also be a part of their everyday lives as much as possible. Dana? I, I want to get back to the envir environmental impact for a second. Wouldn't that be true though of any medication, not it just is, the birth control true. pill? It's it okay. true of any medication. Okay. My, my point about the birth control pill, going back to Lynn's health question mm -hmm. is that it's not to treat an illness. So people take asthma medications or they take allergy medications and there's side effects but it's to treat an illness and fertility isn't an illness. So I would just say that it is not a disease that needs to be treated, it's a gift that needs to be protected. So even in marriage I would encourage people to understand their fertility. I think that's the better way of planning your family. What do you do when people do not want children and they're and they're you know pretty clear about it that it's just not a good time is there an alternative to to using the birth control pill well I would just say that natural fertility awareness is the best way of planning your family and I guess if you didn't want to have children then you could use natural fertility awareness, but it would go, I mean, I also wouldn't encourage people to go in with that mindset of just rejecting children outright, because I think marriage and sex are intimately connected. But that's your, but see, that is your personal opinion. The people that get married never no, want to I have kids. No, I mean, that's always and I just feel, No, opinion. but no, but what I'm saying is what we have to accept is that we are individuals, and what may work for one may not work for all. I so agree. to have a blanket and statement to say what works for me should work for everybody, is that's like a I don't think we're saying statement. that. I don't think we're saying that, because I was very clear early on uh, when I stipulated in a marriage both parents are responsible for the well-being and bringing right? a child. Right, I agree with so that. So that should be discussed among them. Some women don't want children. Some men don't want children. Exactly. So it has to be... So it, the pill should has, be available. It should be resolved among the couple. Right. You know, my, yeah, as you know, my focus has been with teens. Right. But with teens, even with teens, like the reality is these girls that I talk It's to, all reality. Not, it's, like, we have to be real with them. It's like, all reality. They have to make their own decisions. So I would rather one of my teen girls to get on the pill opposed to getting pregnant and then being 14 year old with a child that she can't even afford to take care of. Well, 